today's exciting edition of SCHS Today. Today, we will be bringing you some of the news that's been happening around your school since Christmas break when we had our last show. In our newsline today, we have Denisha Goble and Justin Atkins specializing in SCHS headlining news. Thank you, Corey and Colin. Now let's talk about this year's scholarships. For this year's group of seniors, just like every other, a number of students had the chance to receive the WIMT scholarship. There are four students who had the great opportunity to take part in the scholarship competition. For the first time in a while, three of the four contenders actually received it and will have $1,000 sent to the college of their choice to use towards tuition or whatever they choose to. The three lucky students from SHS are Colin McCoy, Jade Mann, and me, Denisha Goble. I wasn't able to attend the ceremony due to being in the Bahamas, but Colin McCoy is going to inform you on what happened on January 9th. Monday, January 9th, Jade Mann and I from Sean Clark High School traveled to Knott County Central High School to receive our WYMT Mount Classic Scholarships. Denisha Goble couldn't be there because she was on vacation. But it was a very nice ceremony. We heard some very inspirational speeches. The one I found to be most inspirational was from Bobby Keith, the former head coach of Clay County High School. Mr. Keith talked about his journey and how he set goals for himself every year to be better. And that's what I'm going to do when I get to college, is be better. And that WYMT Mount Classic Scholarship is going to help me with that. We talked some good colleges there and had a very good time. Thank you. This week we have a number of feature stories and we'll start off with Houston Dalton and Dave Sloan with a story on the new band teacher. Mr. Uh, Hartman, where did you come from? Well, I originally come from uh, Mount Orb, Ohio. It's a small town east of Cincinnati. And uh, I ended up going to school in a small school called Western Browns. It was a little bit bigger than Sean Clark. But we had a graduating class. I, actually, I don't remember how I remember my graduating class. That was like five years ago. So my, my memory is wonderful, as you said. Um, yeah, I came from Mount Orb, Ohio. And it's a pleasure to be here. It's been, I'm really excited. So yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, what is your opinion uh, of the school so far? Well, my opinion of the school so far, I, th I think the kids are really, really hard working. Uh, the band has been rehearsing since I, before I even got here without anybody teaching, so that kind of dedication is obviously apparent. And sometimes that's all you really need is a little bit of dedication. So really, what I'm doing, I'm not only teaching them, but I'm just giving them a push in the right direction. And that seems like the only thing they need to be doing. So yeah, the kids are wonderful, absolutely. Everything's great so far. Okay. What influence you move here? Well, you know, I, I heard a lot of good things about the school. Uh, besides the job being available, obviously, uh, there's just a lot of, uh, even though Eastern Kentucky is, you know, as far as resources goes, it's not necessarily the best place to be, but the kids are definitely dedicated. And I knew that coming in because I listened to play at festival and stuff, and I have wonderful friends uh, from Hazard and Pikeville, so I've got some more resources in the area, so I felt comfortable moving out here, and it's just been an honor so far to be here. And, you know, and above all else, and what influenced me to come here, is that I feel like I can really do a lot for this program. I can really make a lot of big changes and stuff. Not necessarily big changes that are going to impact the, the kids in a negative way, but more so in a positive way. Okay, what is your plans for the program? Well, my plans for the program is, uh, as far as I go, anytime I go by anything, you have to come up with a five year plan, really. Like, where do I personally see the band in five years? Um, our, our biggest issue, if, if we talk about quantity, trying to get the band bigger. Uh, we really got to focus on quality first because right now you, you got to have instruments for kids. Like right now, I have an awesome problem at the middle school. I have a bunch of kids that are joining band, but I don't have any instruments to give them. So it's like, oh man, that's kind of a weird situation. So for my first priority is to get more resources to make sure we have more instruments for kids. Because for the program to really grow and prosper, we need to be able to give them the materials. You know, you can't really have uh, all the members of the team on the football team without pads. So like, we're going to try to do the same type of thing. And you know, uh, just more involvement in any district activity we have. The kids haven't participated in solo and ensemble. We're going to start doing that. Uh, we're going to start bringing a uh, bigger scene in the marching band world. We're going to try to push that a lot. More concert band literature that we can ever possibly play and ever just challenge and keep going. So that's a big part of it. Okay. And uh, finally here, did, uh, did you play band in college? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you named it marching band in college. Marching band, concert band, symphonic band, orchestra, uh, quartets, jazz band. Basketball band, that, that was good because you, you get paid in college to do basketball band, so that was awesome. Uh, solo, and all, and solo opportunities, did that. Uh, and, you know, just play everything I could, man. Yeah, and choir, I did choir as well. Uh, jazz quartets and choir, and all that kind of stuff. Traveled to Brazil, played music there, played music in Japan, played music in Europe. It's like, they played all these songs that really, really opened my horizon. So music's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, that's basically all I played in college. Yeah, thanks a lot for the interview. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Mr. Hey, thank you very much. Welcome to SCHS, Mr. Bruce Harkins. Hope you like it here. Now onto a little bit of information for our seniors about FASPA, Roger Scholar, and Lydia Drake from Brandon Jared. Brandon, is that scholarship?
just shipping fast for information you have there. Why yes, Katie? It's important that all seniors have scholarship and FAFSA information filled out and submitted as soon as possible as deadlines are approaching. Remember not to wait too long, seniors. It's important to try and get those scholarships. Let's go to Alicia and Kendra with their story on the drama department. Everybody be sure to support the drama club and buy a ticket to the play. Well, that's it for the feature stories. Now back to Corey and Colin. Guys, for those of you who weren't here last week, it was district competition time for me and the rest of the SHS academic team. The academic team is something Mr. Fletcher holds near and dear to his heart, and he knew how important districts was to us. So on Tuesday, he had a pep rally, but not for the basketball teams, but instead for the cheerleaders, the dance team, and the SHS academic team. The pep rally started off by our cheerleaders doing their K-Pos routine, which was very peppy and exciting. Then our dancers did one of their routines that just keep getting better and better. Then Mr. Fletcher decided to play a game. He teamed up the academic team with the girls basketball team and played against the teachers and the boys basketball team. The objective was for Mr. Fletcher to read a question, then when a team knows it, they tell a basketball player. The player then shoots two free throws and have to make both of them. Then, run, then the player runs and tells Mr. Fletcher the answer, getting the team a point. The first team to three wins. In somewhat of a domination, the academic team won four to one. Our reward was to pick any teacher on the opposing team to pie. Naturally, we picked our coach, Ken Osborne. Here's a video for you to share in my enjoyment. That was definitely probably one of the highlights of my high school career. That night, part of the team went to Johnson Central to compete in English composition and future problem solving. Also, on Saturday, we finished off district competition with written assessments and quick recall rounds. Sheldon Clark lost on quick recall to Painesville in our closest match of the year, 16 to 15. Sheldon Clark walked away with the Catherine Hume Sportsmanship Award and a fourth place in science from Ryan Lowe, and third place in science from Kevin Mills. These two will go on to compete in regional competitions in February. Congratulations to you two. I would also like to say I will miss all of you guys, and especially our seniors, myself, Zach Kirk, and Kevin Mills, and also J.D. Priest on Future Problem Solving. Thanks, Colin, for those club updates. Now on to sports. We've got a lot of big events happening here at Sheldon Clark through the next couple of weeks. Wrestling regionals, basketball district tournaments, and the dance team and cheerleaders going to state to compete. Now we're going to send you to a couple of our journalism classmates with those updates. The Sheldon Clark baseball team has been holding early workouts to prepare for the upcoming season. Coach Mike Hall entered his 16th season as head baseball coach has a group of about 10 to 12 players out for workouts. Kids have worked on grounders, fly balls, and after that they hit the weight room. Players include Jared Kinner, Brent Reisner, Brian McCoy, Taylor Perry, Nick Sloan, Derek Muller, Keith McCoy, Austin Priest, and of course me, Justin Atkins. I had the great pleasure of talking to Coach Hall about his expectations for the season. Hello, I'm Coach Hall. I'm the baseball coach here at Sheldon Clark. And we're talking about the upcoming season. Um, so far, we started in mid-January with uh, some um, weightlifting and some baseball conditioning. Um, we've had you know, around 20 kids come out and they're working hard and I'm, I've been pleased with their effort. Um, we actually have been able to get on the baseball field a day or two, so, so far that's good. Uh, baseball practice officially starts February 15th, um, 
so I hope we have some good numbers. We have, um, we will have a JV team and a varsity team, so that would be good for the young, young players to come out. If they think they can't be on the varsity team, they can play JV. Um, expectations, I'm hoping for, uh, we play in a tough district with uh, Johnson Central and Paintsville and Lawrence County and McGoffin County. Um, I hope we can finish maybe in the top three in the district. Uh, have a winning season. I think we have a chance to have a winning season. Last year we were uh, 16 and 18. The year before that we were uh, 13 and 16. So we've been right there at the 500 mark. So I'm hoping this year we can uh, be over the 500 mark. I think we got some seniors that can lead us. We have three or four or five seniors that are capable of showing good leadership. Um, so I'm excited. Got two good assistant coaches, uh, Jonathan Durham and Daniel Harless, that. Uh, really likes working with the, the players um, so we are we're very close to starting practice February 15th we'll uh, start the first official day of practice thank you very much hello Cardinal Nation Chuck Hart's boys basketball team is going into the 57th district tournament of the, as the first seed in the, with a district 7-1 record in the 57th district tournament which will be hosted by Paintsville High School February 20th through the 25th they will play the winner of the Paintsville Lawrence County game on February 22nd at 7 p.m. Two time defending 57th district champs, your Sheldon Clark Lady Cards with a 5 3 district record, will be taking on the hosting team, the Paintsville Lady Tigers, on Thursday, February 23rd. All right, Mr. Chapman, as uh, the center for Sheldon Clark High School uh, Cardinals, what's your views on the district tournament? I feel like we can win it. I mean, we, we beat every team in the district this year. We uh, come back and beat Central by 11. Beat McGoffin both times. Beat the first time in both time. Paintsville and Lawrence County really ain't much of a match. I just feel like we can think we can run the tables this year. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for that wonderful update on the sports going around here at your school. Now we'll go on to the fun forecast of the week. Hi, guys. I'm Corey. And I'm Colin. And we're filling in for the weather forecast for this week. This week we are bringing the heat to the Expo Center. We are going to pound the east. Ridge Warriors. As you can see, I'm dressed in my beach clothes because tonight it's supposed to be warm and sunny at the Expo Center when it's beach night for Sheldon Clark High School. So, Cardinals, from what my phone says, because I checked it before I came out here, it's going to be mostly sunny for the rest of the week. Besides, you know, the whole tornado season thing that apparently is happening in Eastern Kentucky right now, as we had multiple tornadoes touch down yesterday, and it's kind of scary. But if it happens, I'm just going to use my parachutes. Um, swimming trunks and take off and fly. But, so I guess that's all for this fun forecast. Until next time, I'm Corey. You're calling. I'm Corey. He's calling. Have a good week, guys. Well, that's it for this episode of SDHS Today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Tune in next time and we'll see what's going around in your school. Signing off, this is Corey Fitch. And I'm Colin McCoy. Once again, fly high, Cardinal Nation.